Gold prices have bounced back slightly to end the year. Our next guest says, despite a surprising 2022, robust demand points to a brighter outlook for next year. State Street Global Advisors Chief Gold Strategist George Milling Stanley joins us now. George, it is always a pleasure to see you. Um, it has been kind of a meh year for gold, not as bad as some other asset classes that we've been discussing, but a little bit of a dip. Um, what, ha what surprised you? You listed in a recent post some surprises about gold this year. What was the most surprising of those? Um, I think, you know, the, there were some people who were surprised that gold did not do a lot better. Um, and that's there's a certain logic to that in the face of, of you know, inflation at a 40 year high, um, a war in Europe and the, the world apparently on the cusp of a global recession. And then there are people who are surprised at how well gold actually did. Um, I was just looking. Gold opened the year at $1,811.40. And the price I'm looking at right now is $1,805. So gold has done absolutely, um, is not down by, by a lot, as a lot of people think. And if you look at that in comparison to things like the S&P, um, down almost 20% year to date, U.S. bonds down 16%, REITs down 20% plus. Um, gold has actually done rather well. So I think people have been surprised in both directions, if you like. So past performance, not exactly indicative of future results, but where can there still be some heavy parallels with what we should expect going into 2023 with regard to the movements that we have seen thus far within gold? OK, yeah, a lot of people think that, that you know, gold has been suffering from the Fed activity from from rising interest rates. But if you look back at the last two periods in which the Fed was in sustained tightening mode, gold actually did rather well. Um, between December 2015 and December 2018, the Fed raised rates nine times. Conventional wisdom tells you gold should have gone down. It went up 17 percent. And looking at a slightly longer perspective, from June of 2004 through July of 2006, um, just a two-year period, the Fed raised rates 17 times. What happened to gold? The price was up 25%. So I'm not worried about um, what the Fed is going to do. I think, I think, frankly, the stock market ought to be a lot more worried about, about what uh, Powell is doing with rates. And I think that, um, that the construction industry ought to be more concerned about it as well, rather than gold. So you know, those are the kind of parallels that I'm looking to, um, basically trying to add a little bit of perspective. George, are there certain gold miners that are operating uh, the best in this environment? Um, yeah, but you know that that isn't my um, my beat anymore. I'm I'm basically looking at gold, the commodity, rather than the people who are producing it. Um, but you know, with with prices where they are, um, then most of the gold mining industry is doing a pretty good job. Now, inflation is is hurting them just as it's hurting every other industry that uh, that you guys have been looking at uh, this morning on the program. So um, we can't expect necessarily to see stellar profits across the board. But I think that the the gold mining sector will probably uh, have done pretty well by the time we do get to the end of the year. George, um, given some of the surprises we've seen over the past year, though, do investors have to change how they think about gold's place in their portfolio? I think a lot of people, uh, especially in this country, um, still think of gold primarily as a tactical asset. They buy it in the hope that an expectation that the price will go up and that they can sell it for more than they paid for it, whether that's in a matter of days or a matter of months or a matter of years. Um, personally, I think that gold really comes into its own uh, as a long term strategic allocation within the context of a prop balanced portfolio. The kind of research that my team at State Street has done suggests that the optimal allocation for a properly balanced global multi-asset portfolio is probably somewhere around about the uh, the 10 percent level. Um, now, I mean, that may be a little high for some people, but a lot of people have been very comfortable at the 5 percent level for a long time. That was the level that American banks used to recommend 20, 30 years ago. Swiss banks been recommending most of the time, too. Um, and there is a body of literature that says in times of exceptional turbulence in markets in general, financial markets in general, then it can make sense to double your allocations. So, you know, 10% um, does not seem to me to be an unreasonable uh, level. Basically what that does 
the promise of gold historically for investors has always been twofold, that gold over time can help to enhance your returns. And again, over time, gold can reduce the volatility of your portfolio. It can enhance your risk adjusted returns. That's really not a bad promise to have. And that's why I like gold uh, as an asset. George, good to see you. Happy New Year to you. George Milling Stanley is State Street Global Advisors Chief Gold Strategist. Thanks. Thank you, Julie.